Hi, I'm Kathy Fink, and welcome to my series on licks and tricks for claw hammer five string banjo. And this little lesson is going to talk about song or tune introductions. Most tunes that fiddle players play, and in an old time session, you're going to hear people just start with a a shuffle of some kind. And usually the banjo player is just going to wait for that to be over and then come in at the very beginning of the tune. But for instance, let's take a tune like Old Joe Clark. <laughs> So the fiddle player is going to go if you want to play along with it and sometimes I just want to listen so I catch the tempo that they're using but if you want to play along with it one thing I might do is while I'm listening just to cover the strings catch that tempo and come in right on the first string or sometimes I'll just play the chord lightly just one note. Now if it's a song, you're going to think about how do you want that song to begin. A really common way for songs to begin is by instrumentally playing the last line of the song. Let me give you an example. You probably have heard, and this is not going to be a good key for me, but I'm doing it anyway. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. I'm worried now, and I won't be worried long. The last line, I'm worried now. And I won't be worried long. I'm in the key of G and I'm playing D7, D7, G. Now you could just start it with those chords. One, two, three, four. It takes a worried man. You could do that. Or you could play more of the melody. Now I played a pretty simple melody. And then I put a little curly cue at the end to fancy it up. Now I partly did that just because I have a lot of time before the lyric starts, right? I'm going one, two, three, four. It takes. I have all that time just on the G chord. So I'm thinking, what can I fill it with? Hammer, double thumb, the first two strings open, second fret of the third string, and open. And that little curly cue is also a good piece of filler. Anytime you're hanging on the G chord forever and ever and ever, waiting for the next thing to start, that lick might fit. Lots of licks might fit. Da, 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 da. That wasn't very tasteful, but it fit. <laughs> All right, so think about starting with the last line of what you sing. Now, this particular song doesn't really have a separate verse and chorus. It's all sort of built together. Let me take a song that would be a little different than that, and I'm going to go to C tuning, double C. So it's going to be G, C, G, C. And I'm going to use it as, a, as an example one of my favorite songs by one of my favorite songwriters, Cy Khan. He's got a song I've been doing for years and years and years called The Wild Rose of the Mountain. And the melody goes like this. I'll sing the verse. If I had a life to live, I'd sure live it over. Only walk in brand new shoes, just lay down in clover. Only work by Christmas Day, all the rest go sporting. Here's the chorus. 
Honey from the honeycomb, water from the fountain, sugar from the sugar cane, the wild rose of the mountain. So you can distinctly hear a different verse and a different chorus. I have lots of options on how to create an intro to that song. What I usually do is I actually instrumentally play the melody to the whole verse. It's so pretty and I don't tire of hearing it, so I'll do this. <laughs> What if I didn't want such a long introduction? Uh, let me think about that. Honey from the honeycomb, water from the fountain, sugar from the sugar cane, the wild rose on the mountain. It's a little shorter to use the melody of the chorus if I want to do that. shorten it by taking one line out of there. I could go... And I really shortened it. I took the honey from the honeycomb. Da, da, da. And then I just made something up to tie it up with a little blue ribbon that said, start the song, land on the one chord, right? Honey from And I threw that same curly cue that I did in G, I threw it on. In fact, I think I'm almost playing the same exact strings. Sometimes you just want to just play one, five, one, and start singing. But you have all kinds of options. Sometimes I'll just drone a little bit right at the top of a song. My life flows on in endless song, lovers' lamentations. And there I'm just, I'm using the drone five and four are open, fifth fret of the third, open second, fifth fret of the first. I'm just using them to help me create a mood. And that mood tells you, listen up. La 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 to that drone and set up, hey, you're still listening. And there's something kind of spooky and fun about that just by... So those are a few of the techniques that I use for thinking about how am I going to start a song. I hope they help you. Thanks.